The for truth sure. is, the matter is, we've been just piecing together stuff for the last 20 years. Whatever we can find in the garage is basically what it is. And we found these metering valves. Those were not built for those. Those were built to be put into factories, to right. meter chemicals on large factories. And a lot of them had actuators mounted to it. So they'd be automated metering systems. They're not built for soft washing. The Batch Buster is the first valve, the first metering valve ever purpose built for soft washing. What's up, guys? Welcome back to the Lean and Mean Academy. Today, we have a special video for you. Now, I got my boy Cody Yarbrough on the line, and we haven't done a lot of lives of recent. We've been making our own different content, but I think with the launch of this really cool product and how long it's taken to develop it, the R&D that's gone into it, I think that it deserves bringing back the live, if you will. What's up, Cody? What's going on, dude? It This one definitely deserves to be talked at a little bit. So excited to do it. And nobody on this planet except me and you know how many brain cells are tied up in this project. So we're <laughs> very excited about it, needless to say. Lots of brain cells, man. Lots of, lots of thinking, lots of planning. I think one of the big things when it comes to this, and I'm going to let you jump into it on what we've developed, is looking for problems, trying to find solutions, being solution oriented. I know this was a big issue for your company for, and you're sending out 400 plus rigs a year. It was a huge issue, but we decided to come together and not only correct that issue, but also correct, correct a few more things on this piece of equipment or this product to where the guys in the industry can get a little more for their money, if you will. Yeah, I mean, it's the journey we found ourselves on the last couple of years because it, I guess the first one was the hose reel and we hit a wall where we were constantly trying to find hose reels and we're trying to build equipment and we couldn't get them. Titans were great reel, not available. And so we had to make our own brand. That's become the real deal hose reel now. And so check that box off. And then we said, hey, we're onto something here. There's a lot of things, a lot of components in our world, critical components that are just not uh, purpose made for soft washing. So I guess soft washing is still really in its infancy as an industry or a business. So we're still using a lot of parts, like some of these guys use these agricultural pumps that we don't really like because they're not made for that. And they're just, uh, there's gremlins. So the biggest gremlin that we see right off the bat is the availability. Like Aaron said, we're, we're gonna do 400 rigs this year. We did about that much last year, but we also sell blend manifolds on the website. and. My problem was I'd come in here and have, we would spend a bunch of money on valves every month, hundreds of thousands of dollars a year on just valves. And we'd walk in and we've got a little space. We keep things. You guys have seen the shop. It's pretty organized so we can inventory stuff. But I'm looking at a pile of valves and I look at the queue and I'm like, okay, we're good for a little while, you know. But then if you had a big influx of website manifold orders, you just chomp through a chunk of the valves and you could never really predict that. And so it wasn't that we necessarily couldn't buy them. We got the money to replace them. It's just that in the moment, there may not be any to buy. And so now we're either marking our blend manifolds in and out of stock all the time, or we're messing around and we may have to delay a rig build over something so simple as a metering valve. It's a, like we said, it's a critical component. Oh, let me correct you. She is simple, but she is not easy. Oh, okay. my <laughs> yeah, not easy at all. Not easy at all. Uh, so so we're, we're like, are we about 20 months, I guess, are over that really uh, closer to the two year mark on me and Aaron both knowing what we wanted this thing to be. Uh, because you get one shot at it, right? We're going to make a valve and we want it to be basically all it can possibly do for the industry. Yeah, a lot of looking at, it's not just about making a valve, but we wanted to make something that could grow with a guy. 
I think that's one of the big issues that we've seen with some of the other systems is it's not that they're bad. Right. Um, the availability was an issue, but it was also like, I'll let you explain this. When we developed the batch buster, it was more about the modularity and the expansion and for it to be kind of lifetime valve a system with a guy it doesn't matter what type of or size gallon per minute rig he's running right yeah and we released a teaser trailer i guess about three weeks ago a little 40 second nobody talking just a bunch of cool b-roll and we had a lot of comments on there where we just felt like guys didn't even know what they were looking at they were they could not fathom that a new valve has entered the market and it's actually the first soft wash specific metering valve. They were like, what is that? How is this manifold different than this other company's manifold? There are some major differences and we'll talk through those, but the biggest one, I've got a, a little graphic. We built this and hung it up in the office just to showcase the difference between ours in the middle there. And uh, we've got some chem lines and some GF uh, manifold system. So this is really the heart of soft washing is being able to change those ratios. But the problem is past the availability issue, if you build out a GF system, and that's what we've used for years, and by no means, please don't think that we're saying that the GF, it's not like I'm all of a sudden pivoting and saying the GF valve is a poorly built valve. It was just the best we had up till now. So now, you know, a checkmate has happened. So now there is a better valve, but a guy would buy a GF setup, spend a bunch of money on that. And can you hear me? Aaron's talking. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, Cody, you can say that because you're like the equipment I, building guy. I, I you're the diplomatic it. guy. I'm over here saying, screw the Swiss. <laughs> <laughs> They're fine, but you're going to outgrow that even if you... You know, you start with a 12 volt and a year or two from now, you want to try another pump. And that's a lot of us are that way. We're going to buy this Glock 19 and this is the last gun I'm ever going to buy <laughs> until next week. So when you buy that new pump, the problem is now you've got to buy and spend a whole bunch of money on a metering valve that's going to work with the new pump to size up. We really wanted to just integrate that to our valve. So it's, I've got one here. We've got some little fancy boxes that we're sending these out to a wholesale guy. So if you're out there watching and you're a equipment builder, hey, you know what? Maybe we can work together. We're sending a bunch of samples out. So get with us. Let us know if you'd like a sample. If you get approved for the project, we'll send you one and you can play with it and see if you want to start using these because we're planning on this becoming the industry standard valve. But you'll notice it's big bore, right? It's much bigger and the GF there on the right, it's the same sizing one inch body as the chem line. So we like that about the chem line, but what we did, and guys, this is absolutely insane. This was a stroke of genius, but we've got two different couplers here. So we've got our half inch coupler and we've got our one inch coupler. So the valve itself can run anything, but the coupler kit is where a little bit of this magic comes into play. So when we ship it to you, you're gonna get the valve will come in the box with the half inch already installed and it's gonna have the two red one inch. So you need to hang on to those. And uh, if you ever grow, now your valve is modular. It can just grow with the system. You change your coupler kit out, change a little bit of cheap plumbing out, and you've got an entirely different sized blend manifold that can support that next level pump that you're growing into. Hold on, I wanna make this clear for the guys watching. You're saying, that if a guy goes from a 12 volt, he's gonna use that GF thing up at the top right there, right? 12 volt, probably like five gallon a minute, maybe the seven, right? Yep. If he's gonna run that. But if he wants to go to a 24 volt or a gas system or a booster system, he has to buy a whole new blend manifold previously in the past. Right. He would have to buy this one down below. This, a complete, this ain't cheap either. This is a lot of money. Like you're knocking around a thousand dollars here, pretty close. Um, so now with the batch buster manifold, he can buy one and run it all. Right. You're getting this, okay, the batch buster, and you're counting both of these. You're getting two two valves made into the innovation. Okay. So the innovation is where that's at. It's it's like an iPhone, right? It's a phone, but it does a whole lot more than just make phone calls. So that is key. And you could have done it by buying a chem line and reducer bushings in the past, but it's janky and it's not, you're going to spend a bunch of stupidity here doing it that way. But ours are just made into the valve. And the other part of that, if we've had this comment or this question, let me put this back up. I like that thing. I think it looks good. But 
we've had this comment like, how's it different? How's this one better? Number one, Aaron, you want to answer number one? I get read my mind and see if you can tell me what my number one is. <laughs> Cody's number one is that it's available. <laughs> it's a thing. <laughs> okay. It's a thing. It's available. The scarcity of valves in the past, especially for builders, has been a huge, huge issue. Guys will be in the queue and you can't finish their rig because you don't have valves. And they would be upset because of something that you couldn't control. And now that's no longer. A th and we have had guys that would say, I found a valve on Zorro or US Plat or some on Amazon. I'm like, yeah, but we don't, I will go buy it there if it means I can finish a rig for you. But you finding one or two loose valves, trust me, we contact these manufacturers directly where these things are made and imported. And when they're telling me there are none in the United States and we don't know when we're going to build the next batch. And I'm like, okay, when you build them, please call me because I will pay for them before they even import them to make sure that we get them. From the builder's perspective, if there's 25 of us out there that build equipment in the United States, I'm just throwing a number out. You can imagine the scarcity problem. So just because you found one or two here and there, it doesn't mean if there's a run on gasoline, right? And all the gas stations are out, but you're out in the country and nobody knows about that there. And it had gas up. That don't mean there's not a gas shortage, okay? So just because the power's not out at your house don't mean the terrorists have not attacked. <laughs> so yeah, availability was obviously the primary push, the re initial reason, but as we started exploring what we wanted this to be, there's a there's just a ton of innovation here. And that can't be stated enough as how this valve and the price point is right there too. It's gonna be right there around a chem line price, but it's gonna do more than a chem line and more than a GF. And it's gonna save you a thousand bucks or so in the long run. It's a hard thing to explain in our industry because of, unfortunately, so many guys think so short term. It's why you so have short term marketing so heavy because they will make a ton of money washing, make five, six, seven thousand dollars that week and blow every bit of it and make no marketing plans because we're so short term thinkers in this line of work. And we're trying to elevate your thinking to think a little bit longer term, spend a little bit more, get you a one inch system. And then now you've got Excalibur here. You can do whatever you want to with it. Absolutely. Even for the 12 volt systems, that's a one inch body. Like that's a high flow half inch or one inch system. That matters a lot on a 12 volt because you guys know the last step on a wash job is to kill your bleach, kill your soap and purge the line out and rinse. So some, some guys will actually try to rinse a little bit with a 12 volt. When you kill those other two valves and you're only running on one, it's restricted that pump quite a bit. If you guys are running one, you can go out there and try this, cut your pump on, open only one line and you'll hear the pump, the noise the pump makes, the pitch, the tenor of the pump. It doesn't like that. It's okay. It's not going to kill it instantly, but if you'll step up to a one inch valve, then the 12 volt is getting good flow all the time, even on that only one line open situation. In the past, it, it didn't make any sense with a GF to not just use a GF because there wasn't enough reason there to just upgrade to chem lines just for that reason. But if we can build that innovation in here, along with a bunch of other innovations, now we're talking. Absolutely. Absolutely. So what's another thing that has been built in to the batch buster? This is the big magic here. So the coupler thing is big sauce. And the other big one is the V cut on this ball. All right. So it's going to come with a very high flow V cut on the ball. The metering V cut is where the magic happens. But what we're also going to include is a secondary ball that will be in the kit, right? So man, you're getting, a, a, the value here is just insane. We're just crazy for doing this, but we're just gonna include it. And so you retain these. If you upgrade to a 24 volt or a booster or something like that, all you're gonna need to do is swap the couplers. If you go past that into some of these crazy systems, you can actually disassemble the ball pretty easily. The, the ball valve, slide the old V groove ball, save it, that's a that's expensive doodad change your ball out to the ultra high flow V cut. And you want to talk about what we've done with that thing. That's pretty wild. Yeah, it's going to be super high flow. I don't know how to articulate it as well as you, but I know that we're pushing the boundaries as far as what can possibly be done on the flow end with a one inch body for sure. So the geometry of this V cut in here is proprietary to the batch buster on that upgraded ball. We started to just put that in there as standard, but you don't need that. It's honestly not doing anything. So we will include it in the kit. You'll get it in your packaging. Um, 
we haven't actually put that so we've actually shipped a few of these and those aren't in there but they're coming which is something we've done late in the game so going forward they're going to just be included and 99 out of 100 guys don't need that we're talking about getting into these 18 and 20 gallon a minute systems may demand that extra bougie super ball i guess we'll say i like Absolutely. that Absolutely. Ball, but <laughs> it's already there right so you don't have to hunt for it you're just going to be in the kit so make sure if you guys get a batch buster in the future retain all those extra parts it's it is a proprietary v group absolutely and so also with the dial right this is one of the things that i love about this valve is that it's tech friendly but with the old valves man they're just hard to read especially with the tech heck even with some of the guys getting started anyway they're running their own truck it's hard to read on where you are the dial is not built for soft washing those valves that we have always used were not made for what we're doing. I'm putting it out there on the table, Cody, because it's oh, just the truth. The truth sure. is, the matter is, we've been just piecing together stuff for the last 20 years. Whatever we can find in the garage is basically what it is. And we found these metering valves. Those were not built for those. Those were built to be put into factories, to right. meter chemicals on large factories and a lot of them had actuators mounted to it so they'd be automated metering systems they're not built for soft washing the batch buster is the first valve the first metering valve ever purpose built for soft washing and the dial shows it right here cody let me see that if you want to adjust to one and a half percent or one percent you want to go clean a vinyl house or something really easy just have your guy turn the dial man your little tech he can see it one and a half percent go clean it that's your bleach what if you're going to clean like some concrete or maybe pre-treat a little nice easy roof probably a three percent go and put it on three isn't that funny it's built and made to the math <laughs> for what we use with 12 percent bleach four and a half percent that's going to be your tough stains your your brick your moss some blocks stuff like that you're trying to clean and all the way to six percent all the way over to the left is what I like to call lava. <laughs> that's lava. That's the yeah. one you want to hit it one time. I don't want no callbacks, man. <laughs> yeah, and having built around, we're around 1,500 rigs now at this point. I've been saying 1,000 for nine months. We build so many, it's like, duh, dummy, you're closer to 1,500. We get a ton of that. And it's because the valve, the old valves are just, there. so here's a good thing about the old valves and we incorporated that into our design as well you do want 180 degrees i know some of those janky shy valves that guys use they got like a weird 40 something degree skew and like a weird little plate and those are not metering valves. valves no they're not metering valves they're flow control valves there it's is a difference a, it is a very different situation when it comes to the ball it is not nearly as accurate on the ratios as a metering valve is going to be. And what's also going from 180 to anything less, what's the problem with that? Too much change with a very Short. little movement. Yeah. So we do these other old valves being 180 degrees. That was a good feature. They didn't intend that for us, but it was. it's the most adjustability you can get in a valve. But the problem is they got 180 hash marks. So <laughs> we, don't, we don't put it on seven lines past the big line after the second big line <laughs> what, what percentage do you want i want 3.828287 <laughs> we got pie out here <laughs> we, got so pie. we really only need one through six and we had a guy in the comments say what about guys that use 10 percent bleach you're just a weird person right <laughs> so if you use 10%, understand some guys out there do use 10% bleach, but you're the exception, not the rule. Obviously, if we're going to engineer something that's a big product like this, we're going to build it to what the industry uses as standard. So yeah, the, just the legibility that you can tell your tech, hey, go put it on three and it's on three. And the cool thing is that dial works with both the ball that comes in it and the ultra high flow ball that's coming on the first actual delivery of these. We're just dealing with our first small batch that they sent us to play with. Why does it work with both, Aaron? If you change that V, didn't you change your ratios? N no, you didn't change your ratios because the restriction in both both valves is the exact same. So the water restriction in the water valve 
has to be the exact same as the bleach restriction in the bleach valve. And if those two balls are exactly the same, then your ratios are going to stay the same. So if a guy does swap out that ball, he'll need to do the same thing on the water as well. Correct. You wouldn't necessarily need to do it on the surfactant. That's an additional additive, but make sure you change those together. Yep. Another cool feature, guys, the handle, you guys that have lost, we get calls once a month, the guys lost a GF handle. And the, the bad thing is you'll also, so if you lose a GF handle, you guys see how easy that came off? Sheep. All I did was just pulled it and it came off. And you also lose the disc. Okay, the disc is what limits your handle to turn and not just go round and round. So we've had a lot of guys lose the handle and the disc. Aaron, what's different about ours? What is different about ours is that our disc is built in and is bolted to the frame. So you'll never lose the disc. And the handle is actually what is called an interference. So it's very tight on there. It's not going to vibrate off. It's very tight. That was actually a, a point of engineering on this right. valve because of the GF problem that we've always, they vibrate off. And, but a lot of guys, what you're saying is when that disc comes off of the GF and the handle comes off, that thing can just spin. Like the, the ball can just continually spin. And now you don't know where you are. You literally have to just throw it away or pray for the best because you'll never know your ratio again. Once yeah, that you, happens on a GF. Lose that. Yeah, it's sucky. And a lot of dudes have, so what we resorted to doing here is gluing them on. <laughs> we put a drop of super glue and, and try to get that right on there. Not enough glue where it locked the whole mechanism up, but just a drop to glue that handle on. So it's again, a bootleg fix for something that it just, it, hey, let's engineer it out of the equation. So it's not a problem. I cannot pull this off with two fingers at all. I can get it off, but I got to really work at it and really wiggle it and pull. So it's a friction lock. That's probably a month of me and Aaron's brain cells right there just in that to make it right because you do want to be able to remove it. And guys, this, this stuff is pretty, is pretty tight tolerances. Another cool feature here is if you do remove it, it's the stem keyed. is keyed. So you not know where that goes. So you, is it there? Is it there? No, it's right there because it won't go but one way and it's easy to figure out which way that is. Boom. Very important. Final thing, I guess, unless we think of something, this shape is made for our actuator for the smart blend. So I know some guys are out there fooling around trying to copy the smart blend and you know what, do your thing. Regardless, we do have some customers that will just put a on off actuator on their bleach to be able to, I know a guy that he just does a lot of roof cleaning and he's six or nothing. And so he can throw an actuator on here. It's already made to receive that here in house. We're going to use it for a smart blend, which is remote control metering. But you may want to throw an actuator on there. Hey, I don't care what you do with it. It's yours, baby. I, I want you to have it and play with it to your heart's desire, but don't break it. Cody, I'll put a link in the description and in the comments if the guys want to get a manifold. They are available. Oddly, they are available. <laughs> so we, uh, you don't yeah. have to worry about that anymore. We've got a small batch of valves, our initial delivery, and we're waiting on the big delivery to come pretty soon here in the next few days. No shortages anytime soon. We also tested this thing to 100,000 gallons of continuous running with straight 12% tacky outside That's the right. shop over there. So it's a... Uh, it 13 days, didn't it? Something 13, 14 days? 14 days, yeah, with a, a five gallon a minute. So I bought a five gallon a minute 12 volt that was a, a 110 plug-in plugged it into the wall, set a little tank outside and just, we let it churn back to the tank and it ran and ran and the pump was, the poor pump, it gave up the ghost, but the valve was perfectly fine. I've actually got that valve in my gun safe here for safekeeping because we're going to send that one to the Smithsonian. The skunk <laughs> team did a good job. They skunk did a- Skunk wash works. The skunk wash works, man. They knocked it out of the park on kind of the first big product coming from that crew. And we were glad to be the brain behind it. So really excited about it, man. This is a big deal. Um, big game changing products for the industry coming your way from us. That's what we want to do. I've been in the game since I was a kid. My dad literally since 1985. Aaron's been in the game a long time. What excites us now, guys, at this point, is not building an, another rig. Yes, we're going to do that, but it's not at this point. It's okay. I've been there. I've done that. I've got that t-shirt. If we can bring products to market that truly change the game for all of us, that's what's up.
Absolutely. So guys, look, if you're wanting the wholesale, uh, reach out to the, can they reach out to you guys over yeah, at the shoot us an email, softwash southeast at gmail.com. Uh, Jonathan, my sales guy, I'm sitting in his chair. He'll, uh, he'll head some of that up. They'll run it through me, run it, you know, me and Aaron will, will uh, get on there and give you an approval. And we're not just trying to sell them to any and everybody. We've actually got some potential huge deals in the works that we can't talk about, but definitely made this with wholesale ability in mind because I know the struggle to be able to get parts and these guys need them just as bad as anybody. So they are available. Absolutely. So also any guys wanting to buy a manifold, go to southeastsoftwash.com. Those are available right now. Cody, thanks for being on the channel. All right, brother. We'll see you. Let's go. Mm -hmm.